to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and I'm talking today to somebody I've been wanting to catch up with for a long time, and I don't think there's a better person to talk about the situation we find ourselves in than Paul Levy. He's a pioneer in spiritual emergence. He's a wounded hero in private practice, and his, his I would say one of your great contributions is your founding of Awakening in the Dream community and his philosophy and belief, as I know, that we're all in this collective dream. Well, Paul, we are in it now more than ever. Could you find a better example than this to have a collective dream? I can't imagine something more in alignment. It's sort of like the, the, this advertising campaign for my work, for what <laughs> I've been talking about for 20 years. Right. Because I'm talking about that there's a virus um, that's been wreaking havoc on humanity. I've been talking about this for 20 years um, that feeds on fear and it's invisible and it's contagious <laughs> and it's a mind virus and the Native Americans call it Watiko and I'm in the middle of an article. I've just been writing a lot, but I'm still in the middle of this article where I'm pointing out that the coronavirus is actually this revelation of the Watiko virus. And that it's a lower level reflection into the 3D, third dimension of our world. Um, the coronavirus is the emanation or the reflection, which is actually showing us the Watiko virus that is the malady that's afflicting our species. The coronavirus is just a superficial outbreak of that. And so, you know, I'm happy to just unfold my thinking on that. It's, it's, it's so brilliant. But I wanted to just, like lay the groundwork in the sense that your work says, we are having a collective dream. That's like before this even happened. Right, the whole, the whole way, you know, um, a person can't understand what I'm saying without really getting that, that. And that's what I began to realize 40 years ago, but I was so ecstatic over realizing it in 1981 that it got me in trouble and got me hospitalized and diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate just to get out of that as quick as I could and to, con to continually deepen my, my understanding of what was being shown to me. And the experience I was having was that, oh my God, we're having a collectively shared dream. Now we're you're a prophet, Paul. Now you're a prophet. <laughs> so it's yeah, your right. now I'm a prophet where before, I, before I was mentally ill, you know, so you can, I can pick between the two. But, um, and it's not just me, so many people are saying the same thing, but I was literally having this realization and, but because I was expressing it so excitedly or enthusiastically, it freaked people out so much that I just got brutalized and shut down. But I never, you know, I knew I was having something profound happen. Now we're re we are ready for it more than ever right now. Absolutely. I mean, and that's one of, I, I've been writing about the gifts encoded or the medicine or the vaccine encoded within the coronavirus. And this is one way of actually sort of unfolding exactly what I'm trying to say. Here we are, you know, being forced to socially isolate but it's actually, it's, it's showing us our interconnection, you know, experientially. So like more and more people are, are having the realization that we don't exist as separate selves, that we don't exist in isolation from each other, that we're actually all on the same side, that we're all interconnected and interdependent. We depend on each other for our very survival and well-being. And, and that's, to, so in other words, with all of the incredible stress and anxiety, you know, that, that we're feeling in tension, if we don't get caught by the fear, that's the danger. That's the, the mental vector that the coronavirus is transmitting. There's the physical symptoms, but then there's the mental aspect of it, which is the fear. If we don't get caught by that fear, because there's this incredible energy available, we're all in shock. We're in an extreme collective state together. What I'm saying is that it's even more, it's easier to recognize the dreamlike nature because things are so surreal. And yeah. when you recognize the dreamlike nature, that is to recognize that we're dream characters in each other's dream. By being a dream character, what that means, we're actually reflections. We're embodied reflections of each other, which is to say we're not separate. Right. That's and that's to see through the separate self. That's the major disease of our species is that we imagine we're separate. The coronavirus is actually that's the hidden gift. It's showing us that, and by showing us that, it's actually showing us that this dream we're sharing is is like this malleable dream, 
and w- which means we have a hand in creating it, and actually two hands in creating it. And which is basically showing us that we ourselves are the dreamer. We ourselves have incredible creative power, you know, to actually create our experience of the world. And that's, by the way, that's what quantum physics is showing us. I wrote a book about quantum physics where I'm saying quantum physics, the revelations emerging from quantum physics, they're the medicine for the, the um, collective psychosis, for the madness that we're suffering from. But this is the medicine now, right? We are in the medicine. And would you say that we collect... It's a quantum situation in that, you know, the coronavirus or Watiko, it's both the deepest poison. It can kill us or it can awaken us. It can be the medicine. But being quantum, just like light, is it a wave or a particle? It depends how it's observed, how this, you know, pandemic manifests as a lucidity stimulator that's going to help us to evolve or as an incredible nightmare that's like destroying us, it's up to how we dream it. It's up to if we recognize what's being revealed to us. So, yeah, we'll go into what's being revealed, but I also want to say we did, we must have dreamed this up together because we weren't getting it, what the planet needed, what culture, what we needed to do to meet each other. Absolutely. We've dreamed this up together. One way of understanding that people who say, who were like still in denial and thinking, oh yeah, well, we'll get through this and then we'll return to normal. No, you know, to the good old days or to business as usual there or whatever. There is no normal. <laughs> we're never returning back because that, that was a nightmare. That was the collective psychosis, what we were in, in that the veneer, everything, you know, was fine. And yet we were enacting collective suicide. There's no doubt about that. We were destroying the biosphere, the life support system of the planet that we depend on for our very survival. We don't want to return to that, okay? So the, the, the thing is, yeah, you know, from the deeper point of view, we've dreamed up a wake up, you know, to show us, to actually show us, you know, like our situation, that we're not separate, that we're incredibly creative, and that the, one of the, the main sort of symptoms of the coronavirus is we become so entranced by the physical, by out there trying to heal it, which we need to do. We absolutely need to do that. But then we can, we can ignore that it's actually touching us in our own psyches, whether it's an anxiety or stress or fear. And that's the way in. That's showing us that our true power and agency is to be found within ourselves. Okay, so that's another of its gifts. Can we really... Um heal it if we don't realize that we've dreamed it up like when you work with people in your yeah, groups yeah. and there's like some outside stimulus or some some issue comes up in the groups you say hey do you see how you dream that up and what are you dreaming up there and and once some you take responsibility for dreaming it up it sort of shifts this is this is what you're asking yeah. us to do we're all dreaming together you know and but, but the thing I'm saying is that particularly now, things have gotten, people are saying, oh my God, this is so dreamlike. I'm, I'm in a sci-fi movie. You know, I mean, everybody is feeling it. Everybody around the planet. And what I'm saying is, just look at that. Just take it, just listen to what they're saying, that this universe is revealing itself to be more dreamlike. That's encoded in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And, and what I'm saying is, what if we utilize that and, all, and the way to utilize that is to like, okay, part of, like I was saying, part of the vector of transmission of the coronavirus is physical and part is mental. And the mental, it can evoke fear. And if we actually don't get caught by that fear, okay, of course we're going to feel afraid. It's a fearful situation. But we don't want to like identify with that or get caught by that. And then if you don't get caught by it, guess what? All of a sudden, this incredible opportunity is available to you to recognize the dreamlike nature in a way that it has never been offered to us before. Right. We're re- exactly. I, I get it because it is dreamlike. It's it is surreal. It is, and there is no returning to normal. And what was I? I was thinking that um, if we could realize that it's always this way. You know, there's always, it's not just this time is the dreamlike name. Yeah, it's making itself obvious. It's like the head of the serpent has revealed its dreamlike body. Right, and that's the thing. That, that's what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm correlating the corona, the coronavirus with the Watiko virus. They're both viruses. The Watiko virus 
is a higher dimensional virus. It's a virus of the mind and the coronavirus is its emanation into our physical reality. Well, just look at that for a moment. That's profound because when something unconscious, when an unconscious content is, is ready to be assimilated, guess what? It always appears physically. It always gets dreamed up in our life to actually relate to it and engage with it and to objectify it and to see it. That's the process that we actually are able to then eventually integrate it once we recognize that we're looking in a mirror. So the point is, is that the coronavirus is an actual expression when you view it from the dreaming point of view, that this deeper unconscious content, Watiko, which is wreaking havoc on our species, which is the, you know, the bug in the system that's just in which we're destroying ourselves, the coronavirus virus is revealing it if you look at it in a certain way. And um, and so all of a sudden, that's another aspect of the blessing aspect of the coronavirus is that it's showing us this invisible, immaterial, higher dimensional mind virus that because we weren't seeing it, we were just like becoming instruments for it to act it out. It was acting itself out through us. You know, that's what my work is about is pointing at that, trying to like, you know, to turn people on to that. The coronavirus is making my work easier. It's like show it like this like you know neon light just illuminating what's well, he because the big thing that you say and i mean i don't know you work that well but you do say what young said you're quoting young what you don't make conscious returns to you as your fate and right. and this is what's happening we have not made our collective uh connections conscious Right. And yeah, so- no, no, totally. I mean, the way to understand this is from the dreaming point of view to interpret it just like, say, if we had this dream, you know, we go to sleep tonight and we have a dream that there is, uh, you know, this this viral pandemic and, you know, and it's shutting down the world economy and all that stuff. And you and you wake up and you go, wow, what a what an amazing dream that felt apocalyptic. How would you interpret it? What is the meaning? How would you understand the symbolism? And what I'm pointing at is we can do that. We can view what's happening through symbolic awareness to unlock the deeper meaning because everybody is thirsting for like trying to make meaning out of this, to trying to understand how can I like contextualize this? How can I hold it? How can I understand it? What I'm pointing at is that when you see it with symbolic awareness, and that's what Jung spent his whole life trying to bring in to was like, you know, to trying to initiate people to the profundity of symbolic awareness, because then you realize this universe is an oracle that's always speaking to us in the language of symbols, which is the language of dreaming, by the way. And um, it's a revelation that this universe is a revelation. And if we don't get the message, just like a recurring dream, we're, we're fated to then dream up again and again and in more amplified form, like a wake up call, like we have now. So the message, I think, if I'm going to interpret symbols, because I think symbols are here to, for us to deal with, is that we are one planet. We are connected as one species. What, hap- what my problem is, is now your problem. There's no separation. There is, is this the symbol that, that you're getting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one. The symbol is multi-aspected, like a diamond. So it has multiple aspects, but that's a major aspect. Now understand something with Watiko, before I found that name, I, I was, I'd written a book about it and I was calling it malignant egophrenia, M-E disease, me disease. It's a misidentification of who we think we are. If we become, it's like we hypnotize ourselves into this limited small identity that's separate from each other, you know, and, and, and when everybody or, or the majority of people are in that state, it's, it's a form of collective madness and what he goes a collective psychosis. So what you are saying, Alan, that's so correct that in other words, one of the most profound gifts that's encoded in the coronavirus, it's showing us that the separate self is a mental construct, is an illusion that to the extent we're identified with being a skin encapsulated ego, to use a famous term, um, we've then entranced ourselves by the creative genius of our own mind into this unbelievably limited identity in which we've disconnected from our heart and we've disconnected from our true creative power. And then we are faded to create a nightmare. So here we've dreamed up the coronavirus to reveal to us exactly that. There's a choice we have. 
what's happening is really scary. If we get absorbed in fear, we're going to create a nightmare, particularly collectively, as, as you know, because it's so contagious. But if we're able to, to recognize the dreamlike nature, um, then, you know, we, it's, 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 it's as if that's what's being offered to us to like have the recognition that we're participating in our own evolution. Because when enough of us have the recognition of the dreamlike nature and come together, you know, we can literally change the dream. And, you know, in that, in, it's empirically proven in night dreams when you wake up with your fellow dream characters and you realize what you're discovering, i.e. that you're, you know, in a dream, you can put your sacred power of dreaming is what I call it, you know, the part of you that's dreaming the dream into, material, into materialization moment by moment, and you could get in phase with each other and you could literally change the dream. And that's evolutionary. That you can clearly see when you are lucid in your night dreams. What I'm talking about is that that's what's available to us right now as a species in the waking dream. Well, let's say we become lucid because now we are lucid. I mean, because pretty much we're saying it's all a dream. So if I was or we were, if the humanity was dreaming this dream of this illness, disease, whatever you want to call it, hitting every aspect of it, and we're now realizing the dream, what do we need to do to shift yeah. that dream? Right, right. That, and that's a really great question because, you know, one of the things I learned from quantum physics is that even more important than finding the right answer is asking the right question. And that feels like the right question. And we, the, the, you know, what I would say the first way in is to really understand the nature of the disease of Watiko, which, you know, like I say, coronavirus is just the emanation, the superficial well, emanation. Watiko means the dis, I mean, to define that as the, the disease of consciousness, our disconnection from ourselves and each other in the world. Well, Watiko is, it's an indigenous term and, and it, it's a collective madness. It's a psycho-spiritual disease of the soul that works through the projective tendencies of the mind in such a way that we hypnotize ourselves. Use the this, example we're in now, the, the, the reality we thought, I guess, is what you're saying, oh, everything's fine, we're moving along, the economy's building, Wall Street's up, where everyone's living their own separate lives, or we have enough food. I mean, this is the lie that we've been living, that everything was all right, and it was gonna be all right, and it was gonna keep being all right, because we weren't looking at everything, the interconnectedness, the underlying, the people suffering, the people without food, you know, we weren't looking at all that. That veneer has gotten pierced, that, that facade is no longer, you know, and um, it's like the, the veil, you know, between, oh, everything is fine, and the incredible insanity and, and evil that we have been complicit in acting out, you know? And notice that I'm not saying those people out there are evil. I'm saying, no, if this is a dream, if there's evil happening, that they're reflecting my own evil yeah, and I'm- It's our dream. It's our we're dream. all, exactly, we're co-dreaming. And so what I was describing about the way it, with Watiko that you hypnotize yourself by the, the creative power of our own mind. So if you're in a dream and if you see the dream a certain way, the dream, which is nothing other than your mind, will, like I was saying, will just uh, will, you know, reflect back your point of view, offer you the evidence confirming that it's true. You then become entranced, you know, entranced and entranced and fixated in that viewpoint, see it more that way at infinitum. That's you know, clear when you see that you know, in, 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 if you're in a night dream, it's obvious. Now, what I'm saying is that Becoming entranced by the creative genius of our own mind, that's at the source of Watiko. That's what Watiko is. We're these geniuses, and somehow this bug that doesn't even exist ultimately, it doesn't exist separate from our own mind. But we then entrance ourselves, put ourselves under a spell in which our genius, instead of creating the world we want to live in, that's you know based on who we're discovering ourselves to be, which is not separate. All of a sudden, instead of that, we've been creating a complete nightmare, a hell realm. You know, we've been creating and colluding in creating um, a collective psychosis. So then, here's the medicine. The medicine, one way the medicine is coming, see, in Tibetan Buddhism, there are these things called the hidden treasures, what's called terma. And it's an actual tradition in Tibetan Buddhism. And basically, what it's saying is that, yeah, at certain points, like this tradition, when a particular teaching or like a message or a, uh, you know, whatever in whatever form is needed 
to bring the practitioners back to balance because they've gotten one-sided, all of a sudden they will dream up a particular, this terma, this hidden treasure in the universe. It will just unfold. They'll discover at exactly the right moment the very teaching or blessed object or whatever the form it's taking of the, the treasure that they need that will actually, oh, we take this in and we do this practice or we whatever the there message be shows because obviously the medicine has shown up we've been out of control out of touch with the environment you know now that there's less cars and factories the the air is getting cleaner the war is get the water is getting cleaner i mean things are changing because in, in 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 a few days it's unbelievable so yeah. then here's quantum physics quantum physics is has proven empirically again and again that there's no such thing as an objective world that to think of that there's something out there objective separate from us, that's nonsense. That's to be under illusion, okay? That's to be asleep. And then they take it the next step. Quantum physics is then saying the act of observing this universe is actually, can't be separated out, is actually influencing the very universe that we then experience. Now that's profound. That's the observer effect in physics. And what that means is that the act of observation is creative that we are creative beings moment by moment, but we don't know it. So then our creative genius of our mind, we, like I was describing, hypnotizes ourselves in a way that's killing us. So here quantum physics is actually a revelation. It's a hidden treasure that has crystallized out of the universe and into our minds at the same time. That is literally offering us the medicine. Wait, let if me we absorb that. So because we were not getting the fact that we were destroying the planet. I mean, people talked about it and there were protests, but we really weren't getting the fact that we were so disconnected from each other, from the planet, from ourselves. I mean, now we're forced to be with ourselves. The, the, right. the, the, the genius of humans or this greater mind dreamed up something that forced us to feel connected, to feel right. to us back into ourselves, to, to acknowledge the world and the environment. Right, and the thing about these hidden treasures, and you're absolutely right, that, you know, we, so the universe through the coronavirus, you know, in one way through quantum physics and another, in another way, it's giving us these revelations. It's offering us these treasures, you know, exactly what we need to wake up and get ourselves back in balance. But like one other point is don't just limit it to the coronavirus or to quantum physics. There's multiple channels. This universe is a multi-channeled, you know, oracle. It's, it's a it's a living it's it's a it's it's a revelation continually revealing you know itself to us and who we are to ourselves so it's talking and, to us all the time you're saying every moment is an opportunity right, to hear right, the just like a dream it's it's speaking symbolically that's why Jung was so into the profound importance of our species developing symbolic awareness right. you know definitely. and so what what I'm saying is, that, you know, it's easy to like in a new age way go. Oh, it's waking us up. Okay, great. Well, what does that mean? What is, what is then our role? Because it's not a passive, you know, understanding. When you realize that we're dreaming, well, one of the things you realize is that, like you were saying, Alan, we're not separate. Well, okay, take a look at all the parts of me out in the dream, all of my dream characters who are really afraid and are creating unnecessary suffering for themselves out of that incredible fear or anxiety instead of realizing the dreaming, the dreamlike nature. And then when you realize that, you access this incredible, think about quantum physics. The act of observation is creative. How do we want to interpret what's happening? How do we want to place meaning on it in a way that's going to be killing us and creating fear or in a way that's going to be freeing us and unlocking our incredible creative spirit that interfaces with the sacred? Right, so we're calling on the creative spirit because we're actually in a sacred time now. Everyone's locked into their home. There's nothing that they can do except be put back on themselves. So, and what you said before, there's no normal. There's no returning to normal. So we have to take this time to ensure a different future because if we just want to get through this, like most people just want to get through this time and then go back to the way things were. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's going to keep coming back, right? I mean, something... Right. It's, well, one way of understanding that, it, you know, just imagine one person, right? And they have a particular unconscious stuff that's not resolved and not integrated, like some shadow stuff or trauma or whatever, right? 
Well, what's going to happen? You go to sleep at night in your dream, which is just compensatory, is just going to reflect back, you know, the, the very stuff that you need to look at. And if you don't get the message, well, guess what? Then you go to sleep the next night and you have a recurring dream, but it's a little bit more amplified because you didn't get the first message. And if you don't get that one, you know, same thing, ad infinitum until you get the message. And this is a huge wake-up call. The way to understand terma, terma, the hidden treasures, they're, they're like an alarm clock. They're waking us up. This is a terma. The coronavirus is a terma like it's an analog to a terma. It's waking us up. And if we don't get the message, people who think, oh, I just want to get through this and return to normal, no, then they're contributing to getting an even bigger wake-up call. Wow. So, there, so people have to get there is no return to normal. This is oh, the game changer. I, you know, I'm writing an article now, you know, the one on Watiko virus and coronavirus, where I'm basically, you know, that's one of the main things I'm saying is that if you think we're going to return to normal, no, no, no. Those were the good old days, or, you know, I'm putting that in quotes because we were killing ourselves. It was a collective psychosis. You know, there's no returning to business as usual, you know, and that, that you have to people. Yeah. Do that. You have to see through that illusion and go through whatever inner process, you know, whether it's feeling grief or whatever. But, um, and, you know, the thing I'm offering to people in, in, you know, in the article I just sat out today, actually, is that, um, you know, we're being offered a choice of either like freaking out and feeling overwhelmed and getting identified and caught by fear and anxiety and stress, or you know, we're all feeling that incredible tension that's in the air, the incredible uncertainty, potentially fear, right? And yet there's a way of holding it where it can actually unlock that genie, that creative genie in the bottle, and we can access our creativity. That's, that has never been more available to us. Right, because that's, I mean, that's when you're talking, I think that's what it comes down to. We could, um, we can hold on to the past and pretend we want to, go back there, or we can walk into uncertainty. We can walk into an uncertain future in a way that's more exciting than returning to a, 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 a total global system that wasn't really working for the environment and for lots of people. So how do we walk into uncertainty yeah. With right. wonder and welcoming and genius and excitement. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, it. Totally, totally. No, that's another great question. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your questions. And, you know, keep in mind that this universe, you know, has been uncertain every moment up until now, but we've been like pretending like we've been yeah, doing this. Yeah, those on. Yes, yes. We believe with blinders, whatever, that, oh, yeah, that everything is, is, is in concrete. And we've been trying, interestingly, you know, concrete, concretizing the whole universe. But um, the idea being to answer your question, you see, what's really scary to me when we're isolated, if we, if somebody is going through this and they don't have connection to other people who are also awakening, if they don't, in other words, have a sangha, have their tribe, their community, that to me would be a nightmare. That would be really, really scary. But the idea being when you hook up with other people and now so many of us are awakening, you know, and, and interestingly, the word um, bodhisattva, um, the, my favorite translation of the word is a being in the process of awakening. And that's all of us. We're all like bodhisattvas in training. So as we're awakening, you discover, okay, we're not separate. We can actually connect with each other and help each other to stabilize our awakening and to deepen our awakening and to activate the collective genius that's, you know, that gets conjured up when we do connect and we can conspire to co-inspire each other. That's a true conspiracy theory where we can actually have the realization we're all on the same side, you know, that if I help you, it helps me because we're not separate. And so in other words, it's in, this incredible portal has opened up for us to like actually have the realization of our nature and to do that together in a way that amplifies that realization. And in a way, you know, that's, that's like sort of the, the pandemic that I want to create, you know, with you and with, with everyone. So the way I think you're saying to walk into uncertainty is not to have all the answers, but to also realize you're not alone, that we're doing, we're, we could build something together because we're all creative geniuses. We dream this up as a way out of the nightmare and something right. Right. 
Yeah, and yeah, and when more of us have this realization of what we're contemplating, and this isn't some sort of weird new age thing, you know, oh, Paul's just like this, whatever, you know, oh, I would Well, be... your time has come. You don't have to worry about that. This is your time. Right, no, no, no. This is, this is something, this is, this is actually, like I was saying, people are thirsting for seeing the deeper meaning. Yeah. This, you know, I'm just offering, hey, when you look at it this way, all of a sudden, it's an incredible offering. It's, it contains its own medicine. It's an incredible gift. It's a hidden treasure. It's a terma, you know, all of these things. But it, the thing is, it's a hidden treasure. Like quantum physics, everything depends in potential. And, and quantum physics is showing us that we participate in the creation of our universe moment by moment. The same thing with this treasure. How is it going to manifest? How, how with the, the gifts that are being offered to us by the coronavirus, they only will manifest in their beneficial aspect if we get what they're revealing to us. And then we have to step into the dream, I incarnate, and that. Actually, How do you step into the dream? Yeah. Yeah, and actually participate. This is we. Ha it's a participatory sort of thing we have to do. Just like quantum physics is showing, this is a participatory world. And then, so it's not just something you can passively watch and meditate and do mantras and think, oh, it's going to magically. That's to be narcissistic at this point. Yeah, you want to do your spiritual practice, but you also have to cross pollinate with participating in the world. And become, you know, many people are talking about quantum activists. Become a quantum activist. Become, you know, this awakened person in the dream, recognizing the dreamlike nature, connecting with other people who are realizing that. And you discover we can connect in a way where we dream ourselves awake, you know, and that's evolutionary. That's what's being offered to us. What does it mean to dream ourselves awake? So we are waking up because we know this is a dream now. So let's say, but we're not yeah. fully awake because we're, we're stuck in the, uh, what we call a nightmare. It's like when you have a lucid dream. It's not that hard to recognize that you're dreaming and have, you know, become lucid, but it's incredibly easy and seductive. I, I don't want to cast a spell, or at least in my experience, it has been to, you know, get entranced by the forms of the dream and forget. Right. So if, oh, I'm lucid, and then, oh, I get absorbed back into the dream and I identify I'm with myself it. awake, yeah. Right. And, but when we can connect with each other, we can actually help each other, like I was saying before, to stabilize our lucidity, to deepen our realization. You know, that's the real Sangha of the Buddha. And, and then when we do that, we just naturally attract more and more people who are also having that realization and who are activating the collective genius of all of us. And as we're realizing, my God, we're collectively dreaming this. Everybody is, but most people aren't aware of it. But as that virus spreads, that's the, that's the medicine for Watiko, which is the medicine for the coronavirus. You see, because if we healed the coronavirus today and went, and went back to, it would be, a, a, that would be the nightmare because then everybody thinks, oh, everything's okay. No, that's what we don't want to do. Right. So when I'm dreaming and then I dream you up because you're in my dream now, but you also are realizing that you're dreaming me up and we right. kind of meet, that's the Sangha, that's the purpose of the Sangha, to know we're in this and we have some creative potential. We're not observers yeah. of reality, yeah. Right, we're not passive observers of a, of a of separate any, reality. Yeah. Like you're, you're dreaming me up, I'm a dream figure in your mind who's just, you know, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting to you. Right. But, you know, um, I'm dreaming you up, similarly, you know, to invoke out of me whatever it is I'm saying, and you're dreaming me up to dream you up and vice versa ad infinitum. It's, it's, it's not a linear, it's a cybernetic synchronistic feedback loop that, that's happening every moment over time, but in no time. And that's why we don't see it. So what I'm pointing out is that, yeah, when you begin to see it and connect with other people who are seeing it, what are you discovering? But that we have this incredible, unimaginable creative potency and um, agency in ourselves. But let me just absorb that. So when I say, when you say I'm dreaming you up or you're dreaming up, this is the creative potential in me and in you to dream. It's a creative, active, um, participant. I'm actively dreaming you up, even though I don't know that. I'm, and the world is actively dreaming this up in, as a creative potential. And I'm dreaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, the, the thing to understand is yeah. that like you're, you know, it's a collaborative dreaming. It's a co-dreaming. You're dreaming me up, but I'm dreaming you up, and you're dreaming me up to dream you up, and you're dreaming me up to dream you up. It's like there is no separate self. 
You know, it's we're both reciprocally co-arising together. And there is a way when you see that, you can like actually like play with that in a way where we actually activate each other's awakening process even more deeply. That's what I'm pointing at. So I'm not only dreaming you up, I've dreamed this whole Corona thing up. I've dreamed the people in China or wherever this started and every single person I pass on the street. So well, you have to be careful with that. That's kind of because, you know, that can really feed into an inflation okay. or this stuff. <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm so powerful. I'm the dreamer. Well, no, I'm not seven, saying that. I'm saying everything's in our dream, right? Yeah, well, well, seven and a half billion of us humans, including all other sentient species, we're collaboratively dreaming this up together, right? But right. the way the change happens, it's not like the change of the, the evolutionary change or the healing is going to happen by Congress passing a new law. No, the change happens individual by individual you know and any one of us like a beautiful image is like if you take this glass of water and 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 put sugar uh, grains of sugar and you just dissolve them one by one they'll just dissolve it reaches the saturation point you add one more grain of sugar and, and a crystal will manifest okay that's our situation any one of us at, at maybe even at this moment Having this realization of the dreamlike nature, seeing their shadow, however we would describe it, um, just having an expansion of consciousness, that could be the grain of sugar that crystallizes a global awakening in, in our whole species. And that's why, as an artist, I'm creating an art happening called Global Awakening. 